Yo, what's up? The ongoing Assault Engineer event brought one of, if not possibly the absolutely best event squad ever to us, and it's the Assault Engineers. The reason for them being so hyped is actually all the reasons, because they come with a series of ridiculously strong aspects. First of all, as the name Assault Engineer implies, they come with the ability to use assault rifles. This not only makes them ridiculously strong at both offense and defense, but also can save you a squad slot, since using them, there's not much necessity for using an assaulter squad. So if you want to use an engineer squad, you can just use this squad, and you don't need to have an assaulter squad anymore, since the difference between 7 soldiers, out of which 4 or 5, depending on how you build, can have assault rifles, or a squad with 6 soldiers, where everyone has an assault rifle, well, I'd rather have the 6 assault rifle soldiers, also, assault rifles are easy and more comfy to use than normal rifles or even FG-42s. So, this squad is very perfect if you just want to have a nice gameplay without having to do too much work. And if you don't like the slow-firing MKB, you can give them an STG if you're already deep in the German tech tree. So, they are flexible using all assault rifles. Now, this advantage is extremely good for players who are already older in the game, but... If you're a new player, this squad is even better, because this squad will save you a lot of time, a lot of silver, a lot of grinding and even a lot of money, depending on how, <laughs> how you would approach the game and try to get stuff. As I already said, you're saving up one whole slot, meaning, f especially for free-to-play players who only have three infantry squads, this is a complete boon, because you really want to have an APC in every army, leaving you with only two flexible slots. And this is the most flexible squad out of all the squads enlisted. So this is already great. Then, if you're a new player, they come with completely upgraded MKBs, which is ridiculously generous because having to buy 6 MKBs and upgrading them all to the last star costs a lot. It costs a ton and you get all of this for free. Once again, especially good for new players. And it's, you don't even need to be very deep into the German research tree. Just getting the squad with all of the upgrades, all of already completely upgraded, you don't even need to do anything or change anything yourself, it's just amazing. So you can jump straight into high BR matches if you want, this squad gives you everything you need for that. But wait, there's more, because you can actually make them even better. First of all, you can change their equipment. Now, what everyone can do is just give them an axe, give them a random pistol if you have them, though not really that important, Give them a flask, obviously, so they can run a lot. And give them something that resembles a mine or similar. And now the question is, do you want to have them the, with the backpack or not? The backpack isn't really that much needed. Because, well, if you want to grind, here's the deal. If you're still low or if you want to grind and get easy fast experience, having lots of medkits means you can just heal all of your teammates. And you're gonna get a lot of experience for that, so this is good. What you can also do is just give them three med kits and one toolkit. Now you can repair. Now you can repair, and this toolkit lasts for 14 activations. Now you can repair 14 times, which is gonna give you more, uh, roughly 1,000 experience, <laughs> and you can uh, heal all of your teammates. So this is the maximum experience grind setup. And it's ridiculously good. So I, this is actually what I recommend to new players who want to grind. If you don't want to grind or don't need to grind or whatever, you can do the following too. Instead of having the large backpack set up, you can just give them the large grenade pack. And now you can turn them into ridiculously overpowered offensive engineers. Yeah, you can give them this setup. And now you can have fun by being able to deal with all types of threats. So yeah. And, of course, you can also change their perks, because they come with, as you can see, four stars. And if you give them more experience, if you play them, you will unlock the last star. Also, if you have these orders, which you get randomly thrown in every time you, you go through your battle pass, you can just instantly click on that, and you get the last star instantly. So the question is, which perks do you really want? Well, since they're engineers, it's obvious. They already have the perfect fast building perk, which is the most important perk for an engineer. Being able to build things fast is absolutely crucial and changes many gameplay aspects a lot. Also makes the game more fun because you don't have to waste as much time building stuff. But 
This perk is completely useless, you don't really need more building resources, especially not if you have 6 engineers at hand. So you can easily remove this one, and yes, paying the Gaijin tax for that is actually worth it since I'm very sure every player in the world is going to use this quad. It's just ridiculously good, and on all BRs, and very comfy to play. Also, they come with advantages other engineer squads don't have. So, this investment is worth it. So, I recommend to re-perk it into Vitality. And now, if you want to use the squad on high BR with the assault rifles, you obviously want vertical recoil reduction. For that purpose, you need to remove a bunch of these perks. Now, keep in mind there's a problem of that you need to have 6 perks in the first row. And for that purpose, we just put in one here, put in one here. And then, these are the actually good yellow perks. You want fast weapon switch, so you switch between your weapon and your hammer. And this perk you want to be to have your bots being able to shoot faster and more precisely during combat. You don't need this, necessarily. You can have this, by the way, if you like it, actually. You can have this. I personally don't really like it that much. Instead, I'd rather just have faster uh, melee speed uh, attack speed. And... Of course, now we are free to have the additional recoil reduction. And our STGs are even more precise. Though, since you can also repack their equipment with these grenade setups, it's actually, it's actually a, good, a good consideration to give them additional grenade range. Also, for the green perks, you can do whatever you want. Since they can't get fast running anymore, it's actually useful to give them faster walking speed and then just one random fire extinguishing perk in case they catch fire possibly by your own ampulla mode that you can build because regarding the structures that they can build they come with a complete set of engineer structures meaning anti-air guns, anti-tank gun, light machine gun and ampulla mode. For those who don't know what an ampulla mode is it's basically like a recoilless gun or like a primitive mortar that throws molotov cocktails Yes, and they were used on the Eastern Front in the early war. They in, usually in, uh, originally invented by the Soviets. They were very good for dealing with entrenched soldiers or soldiers in buildings on close range, close to mid-range. Very effective, also quite, e quite cheap to, to build the ammunition, quite easy to mix it up together. And obviously it wasn't real mode of cocktails, it was... It was specifically built spherical glass structures filled with incendiary fillings. These things are a lot of fun to use. For those who haven't done so, I recommend just do it. It's really fun. It's really, really fun, especially if you're a defender. You can just shoot infinite molotovs into whatever you're defending and the enemies are gonna have a hard time attacking it. And the last advantage they come with is the fact that they have very much neck pain inducing helmets. The reason for that is they have the World War One reinforcement, so you can literally tank headshots from the front. In game, you can obviously tank headshots from everywhere because the way they work is they reduce the headshot damage by fifty percent. Since headshot headshots roughly double the damage you get, this means you basically don't get any additional damage from headshots. This isn't that much worth it against bolt action shots, but against anything else. It works wonders, especially against SMGs, especially against fast firing SMGs that spray a lot of bullets but don't deal that much damage. Yeah, your head will be literally safe. Also, since the since they're coded, that they protect from headshots in general, it doesn't matter where you get the shot in your head, even from behind or from the side into the face, you still get a damage reduction. And it's extremely synergistic with engineers because guess what? If you're using an anti-tank gun, only your head is sticking out. If you're sitting in a machine gun nest, almost all, all of the surface that you show to your enemy is your head. Roughly half of the surface you show is neck area, uh, shoulders, and then the head. Or if you're in a pulmonet, same thing. If you're hiding in a building, shooting out of a window, also, once again, your head is sticking out. So, this is ridiculously useful. Also, better than the Soviet counterpart, which come with a body armor that reduces all types of damage by 10%. Well, I'd rather have the headshot reduction than the body <laughs> reduction, especially if you're using your soldiers good and intelligently, carefully, the headshot reduction is absolutely worth it.
Also you can change their appearance as with every soldier. I don't recommend to change their helmet since that's where the magic lies, but the rest of the uniforms easily changeable. You can do it by clicking on appearance and then just change whatever you want. Keep in mind you have to click on the campaign to access multiple types of uniforms. And once you switched one soldier you can just click on full apply to the squad and then all the soldiers will have the same uniform. So this, uh, these are all the advantages. There's actually one disadvantage and the disadvantage is that you are forced to have six engineers. You cannot have specialists. Now as you may have seen in all of my videos, unlike many squads, unlike most squads, if you want to build engineer squads, there's one clear, clear, superior, optimal way to build them. And it's to have four engineers, one radio man and one anti-tank gunner. This is by far the optimal setup I would always use and I'm also always using in any nation, any BR, any army. And not having a radio man is actually a big problem. It's actually very sad because this means that this squad isn't necessarily perfectly equipped to be picked at the beginning of a game if you want to have the first artillery strike or you, could, you don't have an anti-tank gunner well you can live without the anti-tank gunner since you have the firepower and if you have a molotov cocktail you can just quickly throw it on a tank and then once it's immobilized just throw an explosion pack or plant an anti-tank mine or give him a tnt charge all of that works, yes, but the utility of a radio man, meaning you only need to invest 3 seconds in clicking a target and then not having to think about and still getting a destruction going off, that can't be replaced. Regarding the history of this unit, there's not that much to say because it wasn't that important or famous. Very simply, if you look at the insignia, it's the classical Bavarian colors. Reason for that is, it was founded in the capital of Bavaria in Munich. And it was part, the, the 157th Engineer Battalion, which you have here, was part of the 57th Infantry Division. 157th doesn't mean that there were 156 others. It literally just is to make it easier and instantly understandable that this Engineer Battalion belongs to the 57th Infantry Division. Now, it was founded before the war and mobilized in 90, uh, 1939. Participated successfully in Poland, participated also successfully and distinguished in France, 1941 went over to the Soviet Union, participated originally in the beginning quite successfully too, but as you can already expect, it wasn't that successful during the later parts of the war, meaning it was destroyed almost completely on the retreat in 1944 and then officially disbanded. So, yeah. Unlike in real life, in enlisted, this, <laughs> this squad will definitely be extremely successful with all of the power that we already discussed. Now, let me know what you think about the squad and if you're also as excited as I am, because it, this is one of the few squads that really excited me with all of the advantages, all of the cool things, especially the special feature with their helmets, amazingly good. Feel free to share your stories that you had so far with the Engineer Squad in the comments below. And make sure you like and subscribe if you're new and share the video with your enlisted playing Engineer Nerd friends. And until next time, goodbye.